Good morning, everyone. It's almost afternoon, but not quite yet. For some, probably. Actually, probably for most. Um, anyways, in the last video, I said that we were going to um, add another function to that one that uh, modified a uh, value with another value. Um, and how we could actually use it to do more than what it was originally intended to do, but we aren't going to do that. Um, it kind of seems redundant. Uh, we already have a function in there. Um, and instead, we're going to look at uh, the return processing and uh, how just because a function is a void function doesn't mean you can't get data to be returned from it. Sorry about the cars driving by. Um, it's too loud, I'll shut the door. It's pretty warm out today though. So if we look at our dummy, we'll remember that our out to out C, out, I forget what the function was called, but we'll see it here in a second. Out to C, whatever the heck that means. Um, it's a void, and that's the function that we're using literally calls printf with a percent s and passes a character pointer to it and it is a void so it has no return but printf does return a value and when it ends it's going to return and when this ends eax is still going to still going to hold the return value of printf um, so we can actually grab the return of printf from this function. Now, a few things have changed if we look in our DLL. Actually, let's look in our program first. Now, you'll see here we have a data buff for the return buffer and we initialize it to zeros. Okay, and you'll notice the args buff is up here now. That's just so that we can easily access them from anywhere just in case we need to. <laughs> Probably not the best practice, but who cares? I don't. Um, and then you see this function that says do call. Now this is new, but a lot of the code looks the same because well, all it is is this chunk that's been moved with another if statement in it. And so the first thing that do call does is set the entire memory of our ret buff to zeros because well, we're cheating. And instead of just saying ret buff dot done equals zero to here and putting a bool in our structure, um, we're just going to compare with the first byte of what's in data to see if it's got anything or not. Um, but yeah, it works. And then it's going to post a message with DLL window, message, WPRAM, LPRAM. Very simple. So whatever message we send to it that needs to wait for return. So, or just needs to wait. Uh, for example, if first thing we check for is is data the first byte of data is zero uh, if it's not go ahead and break because that means we've received something because we're telling it to set it to one in our DLL or if the message that we're sending is one one zero one and args buffer is no longer zero then go ahead and print out our args buffer and break because well that's what we want it to do pretty simple and it'll do it 20 times, sleeping for 100 milliseconds each time. That's pretty, eh, it's reasonable. Uh, if you wanted higher performance, you can set this to 10 and this to 200, and then you're sleeping less per interval, but overall, it's still only two seconds. Um, or you could split the difference and go 120, which is probably what I would stick with. Um, or you can do any variation of the the which that adds up to 2,000, which is two seconds. Uh, yeah, you could do 20 and 50. Does that work? No, it'd be 40 and 50. Maybe 40 and 50 is not bad. I like that. Let's do 40 and 50. But we'll do 50 iterations. We'll sleep for 40 seconds or 40 milliseconds. That seems like pretty reasonable, um, because we as soon as that's in there, we want to be moving on with our life. We want to do whatever we want. Um, so yeah, we'll go ahead and do that. We'll even compile it right now before I forget. 
Um, so now moving down, uh, this is all the same with the exception of our arc buffer not being declared here anymore. And then this is all the same, uh, finding the window, hooking it, uh, and injecting our DLL. That's and waiting for our window to show up. But this is different. Do call 1101. So we're waiting for our argument buffer. And we use do call just because we know that we want to wait for it. And then we do a post message, straight up post message, with the address of our rep buffer because we don't need to wait for it. We, as long as they get it, they get it. And then here's the same as the last video we watched, which is our strings. We write it and we do call. And then you see output return. So do call is going to wait for a return and we know that printf returns the number of characters that it printed to the screen. Now we know that we're sending two strings, therefore there should be two values. So we're going to add the two values together and I'll put that to the screen. Now if we count this up and count this up, I think you get like 37 and 41, which makes 78. So that makes sense. Let's go ahead and look at our DLL. Nothing has changed except our function pointer is no longer void. We've called it an int because we want to grab that value from printf that is the number of characters being written. And the computer, the memory, it doesn't care. Uh, the only person that cares what things are declared as is a compiler because it tells it how to write the assembly so that it is accessing specific memory properly. Um, and that's why you can get in some trouble with casting. If you don't know exactly what you're casting from and to, you could cause issues. But yeah, we, we know what we're doing. <laughs> because it's all memory to the computer. That's all it is. It's just bytes. And do with it what you will. And that's why we're allowed to do a lot of the things that we're doing in this that most people would probably look at and go, huh? But that's, that's the magic of it. So then we come down and we see another data buff here as ret buff. All right, good. And then the right args is the same. And then we see 1111, which initializes the first byte of data within our ret buff to one, and then does our loop with one change. It sets retbuff.ints.i to the return value of output strings, and then writes the ret buff. Well, that's pretty simple. Does it work? Of course it works, but we had to add one more thing. We had to change our cast here on our function pointer. If you don't, your compiler will yell at you because it doesn't know what it's doing. We do. Anyways, let's go ahead and run this thing. So we'll come back here, we'll go to binaries, we'll copy that new one over, we'll run the dummy, we'll bring that into focus here, and we'll run blank, and it'll probably cover it up. It did. Now we see it grabbed the arg buffer, and it says number of characters written 78. We also see our two strings. We see we are in, we see our two strings, and then it goes back carrying on about its day. Now, that original test messages.exe, we can still run it, and it still does everything that it did before. We didn't modify the program in any way, except one thing. Our DLL is an endless loop. So this is trying to exit, but it can't because our DLL is still running, just chilling there, waiting for messages. So one thing that we would want to add is a uh, WM quit in here so that it would you know, quit. Um, theoretically, when the target program ends, it should unload it also, but not always. And that brings you back to those memory spaces that the computer doesn't care what you do with them. So now we have the dummy. We're calling functions in the dummy. 
and we are getting return values from it. So from here, we're going to put an end to this. Uh, I think we've come far enough that if anyone actually wanted to use this to, say, write a bot program or just grab data from a program and do processing with it or whatever, um, they could. Uh, I think we've covered enough. Uh, it does act a lot like a named pipe, except there's a lot of wonkiness with named pipes, and I just... I really like using the Windows message uh, queue for various reasons because it's different I think and it is really rather quick um, yeah I'll leave that to you for you to decide um, and it, it's it's unique but the what was I gonna say I don't really remember Something about something. Talking about name pipes. Huh. Oh, right, right. The Windows message system. Somebody was asking, why didn't we use uh, the WM data copy message instead of using write process memory and just making the Windows API do it for us? Well, two reasons, really. One, since Windows Vista, that message is def uh, disabled by default. That's not really a problem. You can enable it. You can tell it to use it. But uh, <laughs> it's watched. There is a reason they disabled it. So a lot of programs will actually watch that message. And if you're using it, well, that's a pretty good giveaway that you are modifying their program. Uh, yeah, so by doing it this way, uh, we're never accessing any of the actual program's uh, memory. We are virtually allocating one chunk of memory to inject our DLL, which we should actually go and unallocate, but I don't really care. <laughs> you can figure that out later. That's the magic of programming. You start with something that's rather rough. You call it version 0 0.2, right? And finally you optimize it, you pound it out far enough to where you're, you're, you're happy with it, and you call it version 1.0. And then it's, it's good, right? But then you might have a breakthrough, or you add some features, and you re-optimize or something. You might even change everything altogether. And then you call it version 2.0. And that's just the progression of programming. Uh, it, it always starts out somewhere and it always ends better. Well, usually. Some people screw their stuff up worse than it was in the beginning. And that comes back to that old adage, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Now, there's something to be said about thinking outside the box and doing things different than what everyone else does. I've always tried to do things different than everyone else just to see if I could just to see if it worked and really that's what helps you learn that's what helps anyone learn it helps me learn hey what can I make this do what can I tear this apart can I put it back together can I control it okay well that was cool now what eh, I've talked long enough uh, the next video we are going to tear apart something I'm not sure yet um, we're gonna go over like frame pointers stack pointers um, call calling conventions um, what what they mean uh, we're gonna look uh, look over easier ways to find functions that we are trying to locate uh, we're gonna cover some basic assembly stuff in eh, several small videos hopefully and uh yeah so if you have any suggestions shoot them in uh other than that thanks for watching uh as always please rate comment subscribe uh, and by rate i think i mean thumbs up because now it's either you rate a one or a five yeah one is thumbs down five is thumbs up something like that i don't know but do that thing that makes people watch it more not because uh, my benefit
but for yours and everyone else's. Thanks for watching.